What's up, Buck? I'm Buck with DD in the garage. And today we're talking about the 4 7 cooling system once again. Oh, Jiminy Christmas, I tell you what, Buck. All right, so I, uh, I had to drain my coolant when I got that thing. The previous owner had put the lime flavored coolant in. And uh, as you know, the 4.7 liter and the 3.7 liter that went in Jeeps, Dodges, and Chryslers requires the orange flavored. So I got all that uh, stuff that'll eat away your aluminum heads out. I put the orange stuff in. I had drained the block by removing the thermostat. I put this thermostat back in as the ones for the 3747 are uh, reusable. They got that nice little gasket on there. And I sent her home, but amateur hour, I didn't have it totally lined up. And the result was it's leaked ever since. Not a dripping leak, but a hissing leak. It's just boiling a little bit of coolant out every time. And then my Jeep has a little coolant, and then I'm coming up the hill pulling a trailer, and it's getting a little hot, and I'm wondering what in tarnation's going on. I thought I had these cooling system problems tackled. Apparently not. So, in what I desperately hope is the last cooling system video I need to make about the 4.7, we're gonna talk about all the issues. Every single issue with the cooling system, how to prevent them so that you can avoid overheating your 4.7 or 3.7, which as we all know, leads to dropped seats and all other sort of mean, nasty, ugly things. So, first thing, I went ahead and got a new um, thermostat because I do believe that the rubber uh, gasket on this one is just is too far gone the rubber ceiling uh, it's not an identical match which makes me a little concerned it is by Motorrad which is not a bad company so we're gonna throw it in and see how it does uh, I'm gonna get this in there and we're gonna talk about some of the other issues because there are a number of them I have found and tackled and faced them all and I come now to share my experience with you so that you can have a slightly more enjoyable time with your Jeep Dodge Chrysler 3.7 4.7 liter American made Detroit iron engine. I'll be back once this guy's in. All right, next thing you need to know about is the bleeding port. You have to bleed the coolant system on uh, these 4.7 and 3.7s. The little thing right here, I think it's a 10 millimeter hex. What's this one? This is a 5.16, she seems to be fitting just right. Oh, there you go. Carefully don't strip that out. It is aluminum, temperamental as it can be. Please ignore the background noise. My neighbor is still building an arc. Now, pull this thing out before you even start running it to bleed it. Put her aside, don't lose it. If you lose a plug, you're gonna have a bad day. Now that makes it easier to do the initial fill uh, because now coolant goes in here, air can come out there. You don't have that thing where you have to wait for it to all settle. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring my coolant in. Another thing to note, even though I already said it, we are using the orange coolant. If it doesn't taste like orange, it's the wrong one for your 4.7 and you're gonna have a bad time. No lime sherbet, none of that uh, pink bubblegum stuff they're putting in the new ones. Orange Julius or nothing. All right, now just keep adding over here until it starts coming out your bleed port there. Now you can be relatively sure that there's not too much air uh, it left in your system. Now to get that last little bit of air out, what we're gonna do is run it with this port open. And what you're gonna be looking for are bubbles. All right, now you want the heat in here blaring so that you're pulling air over your um, uh, heater core there. You need to let her get all the way up to temperature so that that thermostat opens and it really cycles everything through the whole motor. Then, when you're looking for bubbles, as soon as they stop, you know you've actually got all the air out of your system. Only once the heat's blaring, the thermostat's open, and there's no more bubbles coming up, do you know that you truly have a properly filled cooling system in your very temperamental 4.7 or 3.7 liter Jeep Dodge Chrysler Detroit iron motor. Not iron, it's aluminum, but who cares, whatever. And there you go. Your 4.7 is now properly bled. Uh, sadly, that is not the last issue you have to watch out for on these 4.7 and 3.7 cooling systems. Ooh, buddy buck, I'll tell you what, all types of things happen. We had to move the Jeep inside, the storms are brewing. Hope the neighbor got his arc done. 
As you can hear, we're joined by the executive producer in the shop. She's inside inspecting the inside while we talk about the last piece of the cooling system that causes these delightful 4.7s to overheat, drop seats, and end up as gigantic paperweights out there in the yard rusting away. And it is, in fact, the fan. The hydraulic cooling fan I believe is the result of those kraut sniffing engine nerds over there at Daimler when they got involved with Chrysler and by extension Jeep in the late 90s. This kind of over-engineered, doomed to fail type technology is what those German engineers love to do. Let me explain what it is. Instead of giving it a mech fan, the way you would on a V8 with a tow package, or an E-fan, the way most vehicles have today, this has a hydraulic fan. It's a double gear rotor hydraulic pump, and it's run off the power steering. Now, the thought process there was, hey man, mech fans uh, steal at power from the engine, and E-fans tend to not be able to keep up with a heavy-duty application. So, let's take this power steering pump that is creating work anyway and steal some of that work for the uh for the fan all right in theory works great i'm sure in 2001 when this thing rolled off the line it worked great but as we sit here in 2020 19 years later it leaves something to be determined now this is why this is just a terrible idea first and foremost if your power steering pump goes your fan will not run at all and you will overheat that is a huge liability for me i don't like having more than one system dependent on each other like that now you could be saying, well, it's abundantly clear when your power steering goes out, uh, just stop friggin' driving. Well, a lot of people don't understand that those two systems are linked. Uh, additionally, people put the incorrect fluid in here, which will very quickly either burn your fan out or cause it to not run uh, at the proper RPM. That's what I did when I first got this thing. I didn't have the right power steering fluid in here, and so my fan was running, but I couldn't get it to run at the proper uh, RPM. The viscosity was incorrect, the gear rotors were not happy, whatever have you. This thing was getting hotter than Hades, and uh, I was about ready to drop a valve seat, you know? Um, I was one trip up the mountain, uh, which there's a mountain in the middle of my town, so pretty much anywhere you go, you're going up the mountain, uh, away from overheating this thing. So I got a new power steering pump, I put the right fluid in it, and you know what? It just doesn't work right. I've gone over the whole system. Every O-ring is new. Every line is new. There's a power steering cooler installed um, from the factory, and it just... It just doesn't work right, and I believe it's one of the reasons that this dang old Jeep, she get hot. All right, now let's recap everything we've discussed. Basically, these things go sour because of a lack of understanding, some good old fashioned American ignorance, right? You don't know that you need to line up that thermostat just right. So now you've got a very slow seeping leak, which leads to a low coolant situation. If you go back to sixth grade physics, Liquids cool better than air, so if you have a big air pocket in your Jeep, uh, you're not going to be cooling as well as you should. On top of that, then you have this crazy complex uh, gear rotor hydraulic fan situation that it either you don't get, it doesn't get maintained properly, uh, or I, I personally don't think it works right. I don't think in this Jeep it's working properly. Maybe having the wrong fluid in it blew my gear rotors out. I don't, I don't know. The fact of the matter remains, I can't wait to be done with it. I don't know if I'm going to go to an E-fan or a mech fan. I'd like to go to a mech fan, um, as this thing does a lot of towing. Uh, I think there's there's room for a mech fan in there. You get rid of all that, you just get a normal power steering pump. Uh, but that's something I'm definitely going to do. So here's the long and the short of it. Here's the long and the short of it. This thing's got aluminum heads. Uh, so it's going to be prone to dropping valve seats anyway. Now you, you, you lump on top of that all the stuff we just discussed, all the various ways that you could abuse this cooling system uh, and you have a potential recipe for disaster. And, and it's such a big deal because if I think about like my four liters that I've owned, they're easy, man. There are no rules. It doesn't need special coolant. The thermostat housing is cut and dry. It's the same thing we've all been doing for a hundred years. It's got a normal fan in it that it's either running or it's not running. There's none of this silliness, though the, the relays do go on the four liter WJs, but we all know that. Uh, and most other vehicles you have, it's just simple. Maybe it has a special coolant, but it's got a normal fan and all this other stuff. So these things get a bad rap. I get two schools of people, two schools of people when I bring up the 4.7. First are the people, they had one, it dropped a valve seat, ate itself within six months, and they despise this motor and they would never buy another one or its cousin, the 3.7. The 3.7 is a very, very similar motor. They have uh, mostly the same components there. Uh, and then I have the guys who uh, they say, man, listen, if you just 
jimmy jam and do the right things to it it's a very loyal motor i'm slowly becoming one of those guys when i first got it man i'll tell you from having daily four liters for about the past decade and a half to not have a four liter and have a motor that everybody knows has some questionable things and that i didn't really know as much as i knew about the four liter i was nervous and i didn't love it i'm slowly learning it i'm slowly learning that it is a it's a pretty it's a pretty solid motor it does everything i ask you just you just really got to keep an eye on that uh on the cooling system and you really got to understand man like you have to you have to go looking for this information which is why we're doing this video today put it all in one place hopefully everybody who ever buys a 47 will watch it watch it twice this kind of information needs to be day one stuff hey you need to bleed it, it has to be that orange hope you need to make sure this has the right fluid and the right level of fluid uh, you have to make sure if an o-ring the o-rings on the bottom of the fan go and then they leak and you're not getting proper pressure you see it's just a very temperamental system and i'll be dipped if it doesn't make me a little uncomfortable until i started getting getting a little bit better with it. So, by all means, if you got any questions, let me know down in the squawk box. Because every time I put one of these videos, I get a whole bunch of guys who are just a little bit unsure about what they're supposed to be doing. I understand, I was there. What are you doing, kid? She's hanging out the window. You driving the Jeep? That's good, somebody better. <laughs> said, Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. Uh, that is our executive producer. She's a monkey with a toolbox in training. I, I digress though, gosh darn it. Leave me the comment down in the squawk boxes. Let me know about your 3.7 or 4.7 success story or horror story so we can share it with the group. Let me know if you have any questions at all about this. I'd love to answer stuff on rusty, dusty, crusty Jeeps. Help to keep this stuff on the road. I keep saying Jeep, but same 4.7 they put in Dodges and very similar to the 3.7 that went in Jeeps and other Chryslers. The last thing that I'm going to bug you on before I let you go on down the road to your next video, we are very proud to have finally been able to release the 2020 4th of July Independence Day Jeep American Flag uh, t-shirt available now on our Etsy as some of you may know Eric and I started our own little print shop we've been doing all the designs in-house we've been making all the shirts in-house uh, we finally have these guys available uh, what you're looking at here is the American flag as envisioned by a Jeep enthusiast monkey with a toolbox each of the stripes is a different silhouette of a different Jeep I believe you got your uh, ZJ's XJ's YJ's TJ's JKU's Wagoneers uh, Willie's MB's in there uh, if you are interested in such a shirt we are gonna do everything we can to get them to you by the 4th of July. The uh, Etsy link will be down below along with all of our other stickers and koozies and t-shirts and everything else. What are you doing there, kid? Can I help you? Yeah. you have anything you want to say to the people? Can you say Jeep Jeep? Doing? Say Jeep Jeep. You want to go drive the Jeep? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we have to go drive the Jeep. Uh, you should probably like the video if you like the video. That's common sense. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe at least check us out on Etsy. See if there's something there you would like. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Can you say thanks for watching? Thank you. She gets all shy as soon as the camera's on. Let's go, kid. Jeep, jeep.